Hey guys, this is Eddie. We're going to start to introduce some of the more advanced concepts slowly. So uh, we're going to start talking about something called the dot product, but we're not going to start straight away. What we're going to do is talk about some easier concepts and slowly bring you up to more advanced concepts. Okay, so my first question is, if we have a vector u, okay, I'm just going to draw a random vector here, and let's call this vector, vector u, and I have another vector called w, and uh, let's draw it, so these vector have the same origin. Now, what I want to know is how much of this vector u is acting in the direction of vector w. So in other words, I want to break down vector u into two vectors such that part of vector u, so I'm going to draw it with a different color, part of vector u is acting in this direction okay in the same direction as W and then the rest of you is acting in the direction perpendicular to you so vector U is made up of two vectors one acting in the direction of W and the the other acting in the direction perpendicular to W so what I'm trying to find is this distance here, right? That's what the question is saying. How much of vector u is acting in the direction of w? So I'm trying to find this distance. So if this point is the origin, and let's call this point, um, let's just say, uh, let's give it a symbol. Uh, let's just say symbol B okay so I'm trying to find the distance OB right I'm trying to find out how long OB is okay so how do we do that well the first thing we need is the angle between U and W we need this angle here because as soon as we have that angle then what we have here is a right angle triangle and we have the distance of U and um, if we have that so this is opposite adjacent sorry hypotenuse adjacent so using trigonometry we know that it's adjacent and hypotenuse that we're concerned with. So you can simply write cosine theta is equal to A over H. Cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side, which is OB, divided by the hypotenuse. Now we want the length of the hypotenuse which is the magnitude of vector u. Okay, so that's how you find how much of a vector is acting in the direction of another vector. Is you, oops, I should explain the last part. Okay, so therefore OB is equal to the magnitude of u times cosine theta right by some simple rearrangement moving this from the bottom to the top on the other side so OB is therefore equal to the magnitude of u times cos theta so how much of a vector u is acting in the direction of another vector W all you need is the angle between u and w and let's call it theta 
and then the answer is just the magnitude of u times cos theta right that's the answer okay so let's try it with a real life example All right, so in this diagram we have a vector p and a vector q and the angle between them is 40 now if the length of vector p is 6 meters how much of vector p is acting in the direction of vector q so rather than 6 meters uh, actually I'm just gonna get rid of the units because it could be 6 of anything so if the length of p is 6 okay so get that done come back when you're done okay so the answer is simply P the magnitude of P times cos theta so that's uh, 6 times cos 40 and the answer is 4.6 So if you imagine at right angles um, to Q, if I draw a perpendicular line at right angles to Q that's joining P, um, the amount of vector P that's acting in the direction of Q, so this length here, let's just call this P, um, OP is equal to 4.6 okay now the key word okay that I have been withholding from you guys because I didn't want you guys to get confused this length here how much of P is acting in the direction of Q the key word for that is scalar resolute The scalar resolute of P on Q. Okay, so if you ever see um, a problem asking for the scalar resolute of one vector on another vector, that's what it means. Okay, thanks for watching guys. See you next time.